Oregon may have had the gut check of Saturday. They beat Utah 20 to 17. The Pac-12 was so good again yesterday. If you're sleeping on the conference, you have slept on or you've slept on some really good football. The Big 12 as well. I am at this point, I am done doing the work that their commissioners should be doing and selling this product to you, but this one was special for Oregon. Bo Nix ended up playing in this game. We bet Utah cuz I didn't think Bo Nix was going to play. He ended up playing very obviously less than 100%, less than 90%, 80%. He couldn't run. He couldn't do the things that make him a dynamic quarterback. Point blank, Utah's supposed to win this game. If you say the things I'm about to say out loud, even if you know Bo Nix is going to play, if I tell you Nix is not going to be able to run at all, they didn't even bother calling a lot of the option type stuff that they sometimes run with him because they knew that he was not a threat to run and Utah would pick up on that after one play if they didn't already pick up on it beforehand. Oregon was under 2.5 yards per carry. So they didn't run the ball as a team effectively. I just took away their identity. I just took away everything that makes them lethal as an offense. Their offensive line was banged up, so they essentially played handcuffed. If I tell you that stuff, oh, and by the way, the team that's coming in is a team that beat you physically to death twice last year, you're not supposed to win that game. And they won the game. And how did they do it? Their defense stepped up when it needed to the most. I told a couple of people today, this was the game I went back and watched before any other game when I got on the plane last night. I couldn't believe their defensive front. In fact, I couldn't believe Oregon's defense, period. I'll get back to that in a second. But I thought they played at an extremely high level. They were disruptive. They never allowed Cam Rising to get comfortable. I think there's a reason why he had three picks last night, the Utah quarterback. And I just didn't expect that. And I think you could argue this is the best Oregon's defense has looked all year, and that's kind of what I want to get back to. I'm not here to confirm anything. I'm not in their locker room. I'm not in their coach's box. But there are some interesting theories by some folks who are pretty plugged into the program about, you know, maybe some of the procedural things that could be changing behind the scenes there. I talked about this with the offense at South Carolina. Could it be that the defense at Oregon is operating a little bit differently procedurally today than it was three weeks ago, five weeks ago, seven weeks ago. And usually what I mean when I say that is, who's calling the plays versus who was calling the plays? Just something to keep in mind. Could be collaborative. I just, I, I have suspicion that things may have changed there in the last maybe week or in the last two weeks. But whatever you did last night, keep doing it because that looked really, really good. How many weeks of gas do you have in the tank? That's a question I always ask this time of year. Because you can get fooled into buying stock in a lot of teams in October. October is not easy to make it through, but October is infinitely easier to make it through. Many a team has made it through October. Far fewer have been able to navigate the waters in November. They get really rocky. It gets treacherous. The mist sets in. It's unfamiliar territory for a lot of folks, especially if you're a first-year head coach. And so it would have been perfectly understandable after Oregon got beat by Washington last week for them to drop this one, banged up though they were, and just think to themselves, all right, we made it into November, but it turns out we were a team with 10 or 11 weeks of gas when we needed 13 or 14. Nope. They picked themselves right back up. I mean, this was a true gut check for for Bo Nix and for the program. And this is a first for them. It's Dan Lanning's first year as a head coach. That staff, it's their first year together up there. And here they are. They're alive way, way later in the season than I think a lot of folks expected them to be. And they're a prime player now. USC is going to be in the Pac-12 championship game. Could they be facing Oregon? We will get that answer. This week, they play Oregon State. Guys, thanks for watching Late Kick. Make sure to leave a comment. I love interacting with you. But most of all, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. That's how we keep all of this free.